Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Mods and Rockets, my modded Kerbal Space Program playthrough. Yay! Okay, so so far we have done reasonably well with what we're doing here. We've been to the been to the moon. We've been to Minmus. Uh, we've put a, a, a space station up, despite the um, financial worries that that brought. Uh, we have overcome those financial worries a little bit. Let, let's be honest, not not remarkably well. Because if I come in here. Uh, I've still got the vast majority of my stuff unpurchased. Um, now this isn't too much of an issue, uh, though, mm, though obviously I would like to have everything open to me. Uh, it, it just uh, The main problem is when I come to these uh, orbital science parts, you'll see that almost all of them cost over a quarter of a thousand, uh, quarter of a hundred thousand. You know, that, that's a lot. Four of them is a hundred thousand. Um, so yeah, I need more money. Quite a lot more money. And the, now, in the stock game, there's always one place that I went to uh, when I needed money and or science, and that was Minmus. And somehow, fine print seems to have double-guessed me. You're right, Gene, how's it going there, man? Because we have this whole group of Minmus stuff going on here. Now, I'm not going to go for the orbital station, because down here there is a uh, where is it? planetary base on Minmus, and that is worth a lot more money. And I'd rather put my efforts into doing that than to put an orbital station in, even though the orbital station will probably have more sort of uh, long-ranging uh, functionality. I could use it as a fuel depot or something like this, whereas just a base on Minmus is kind of stuck at Minmus. Uh, or stuck wherever we put it. Uh, possibly on a highlands? I don't know, I haven't even decided. But, so we're going to take that one. Uh, at the same time, there's like this plant the flag on Minmus. You know, we, we can we can plant a flag on Minmus. That is a proven mission plan. We can do that already. Uh, and there's this conduct orbital science stuff. So the spectrum analysis, the observational telescope, uh, and a temperature scan. Uh, which I, I, uh, we can do. That's easy enough, right? Um, what else have we got? Uh, no, no, no. I think that was all of it. Indeed, it was. Um, when when we're done with that, we're, we're going to go to Juno, I think. Uh, it's, get, it's getting close to that time. Uh, I've also noticed that there's more um, atmospheric flight stuff going on, and I really enjoyed that, so I'll probably be doing that when my stuff is on transit from Kerbin to Minmus. Um, I don't know whether that'll be a separate episode or this episode or what. But anyway, yeah, we have... <sighs> some stuff to deal with. Uh, we, we have some science to, to uh, collect and we have a base to build. So let's go, uh, let's go sort that out. And so sorting out has led to this vessel design here. Well, not just this vessel design. Actually, it's uh, two vessels. There's this one, uh, which is our habitation module and orbital science probe. You'll, you'll see the orbital science probe on top there. Also, take note of the uh, the solid booster separation there. I've started going through uh, a series of uh, different separatron placements to make this nice little flower pattern when everything flies away. Uh, wh where was I talking? Yeah, so this is a habitation module. You'll see we've got the hitchhiker's uh, canister in there as well as a... Um, uh, control pod up on top just so we have full control. I'm not sure whether the hitchhiker's canister actually uh, grants control or not, so I stuck that up on top just to be sure. But just to be sure. Uh, and also we've got a, a little um, satellite there to go around Mimus and, and grab all the orbital science stuff that we needed for that particular contract. All right, so up in orbit, that happened incredibly easy. This is why we are speeding through this. Uh, well, we're at times five on the uh, the the. What's this thing called? The editing software. Mainly to save you guys the trauma of having to watch this through at regular speed. I mean, the whole mission itself took like 45 minutes. But more importantly than that, bearing in mind we're at times five acceleration, look how long I'm spending getting this maneuver node in place. Like, it's it's lovely that I, I'm doing such a, a fine control, uh, fine precision uh, mission here. But we all know that once I set up that first maneuver node, the second one, or perform that first maneuver node, the second one isn't going to be as exact as it is. So I'm not sure why exactly I'm doing that second maneuver node quite, quite so precisely there. Uh, yeah, no, that's it's confusing. But anyway, <coughs> all that aside, here we are about to perform my first burn. Um, Again, using the, uh, the the nav ball scale to, to help make sure that we are as exact as possible. Because like when you are lining things up as precise as I just did, you want to make sure that you've got it as precise as you could possibly get it. 
which still due to the wonders of floating points and you know human error you know the, the time it takes me to go oh stop and press the x button things like this uh all these things factor in to make it not quite as precise as it could be which you know it's a little bit annoying but there we go with the help of the kerbal alarm clock and the maneuver node system everything should be all right you know we'll get as close as possible um the, my main my main indicator for how close my periaps actually is to Minmus is in fact the orbital inclination of the orbit after I've left Minmus's uh, sphere of influence. I know we're not going to be leaving, but because of the way that gravity assists work, if that uh, orbit is inclined, I've got my periaps as close to the surface of Minmus as possible. Or at least that's the theory I'm working by. It seems to do me fairly well. Okay. Um, so what's going on here now? Uh, I've just uh, inclined my orbit to make sure that we are on the plane of Minmus, and then we're just going to burn through, waiting for the SOI change, of course. It's, it's, if nothing else, it's good practice. Uh, taking a little bit of time uh, in flight to reset the, the Moho encounter, which I would note uh, Moho goes around the sun so fast that it actually comes around before any other um, planets uh, transfer windows pop up again. So, you know, that... that no skin lost by missing this one. A um, little bit of prestige, maybe. You know, it'd be nice to have le left for Moho the moment we could, at least with just a single probe. But uh, with that st uh, space station and stuff, we're, we're not doing as well as we could have. But enough of my financial woes. Who, who cares about that at this point in time? We are racing towards this beautiful green rock called Minmus. Uh, and things are going remarkably well at this point. Um, again, this is why we are speeding through it as fast as we are. Uh, though I do want to take a moment to explain my, my plan of the double slow down burn. Basically, this one here is to put me down to the correct altitude on the far side. And then, because we always end up landing on the far side, we're going to be doing our uh, orbital correction with this maneuver node right here to bring us into a nice circular orbit, nice and low down, so that landing is, should be a, a real smooth, easy operation. You know, if, if we're, we're, we're skimming at like 10 kilometers over the surface from a nice circular orbit, all we really need to do is break our um, is it horizontal momentum or forward momentum, you know, orbital orbital velocity bring that down to, to close to zero and just drift down because Mimus is so very very light on the gravity there okay so what we're going to do now is uh slow down the camera speed just a little bit um because we're about to release the uh the probe um, obviously we're going to wait until the, the light side of the planet because you know that, that's the one we really need and whilst we're over that side we're going to uh, take the opportunity to circularize to uh, 10 kilometers on both sides because that's just well, that's just nice to have a nice perfectly, perfectly circular orbit or at least I think it is anyway I can't see it as a sign of prestige to be able to bring your orbit to a, a, an ex eccentricity of at least close to uh, is it one or zero I can never remember which way the, the, the scale goes zero of course zero is a circular orbit uh, i didn't at all just stop the recording there to go find out it, it was off the top of my head i'm i'm that good um anyway what we were just doing there is circularizing the orbit and i absolutely love skimming down over the surface of these planets without any any atmosphere there's something about moving at close to two kilometers a second at, well i suppose here we're going a couple of hundred meters a second but in a in a slightly larger body, there's something nice about going nearly two kilometers a second right down through the the valleys in the in the uh, between the mountains and stuff. Okay, so what's going on here? I forgot to put a um, a communicatron on the on the the satellite here, which a little bit a little bit vexing. Completely scuppered my plans for being able to do the orbital science, but that's okay because I've got the Kerbal Attachment System installed, so I just took the one off the Habitation module and stuck it onto this probe because we're going to send another uh, module up to the station which can have uh, a second comms unit on it, which is the phrase I was looking for right there. Uh, but now I've also discovered another problem. Um, we've gone and put this probe down as low as possible for the joys of being able to watch it skim overhead from our um, our orbital, not orbital, our land base. Uh, but unfortunately, you see the orbital telescope thing on my contract at the top right there. Turns out that was supposed to be done in high orbit, which, I mean, it's only 16 kilometers around Minmus, I believe, which, you know, isn't too much to, 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 to knock ourselves up and back down. 
But our fuel reserves are a bit low in this craft. You'll see that we've only got the, the little toroidal um, fuel tank there. That said, this ship doesn't weigh a lot. So uh, I think we're probably going to be able to push it back up to an orbit and maybe even get it back down. Uh, and I think I'm now going to cut until the landing because all we're going to do now is watch this go round Vinmus and wait until like there's enough power to be able to do the orbital science and like... Well, I transmit the science back and then try and figure out why I'm not getting the other one. But I've just told you why I'm not getting the other one. So, with everything apart from the high altitude orbital telescope thingy done, uh, we're going to come back to our habitation unit. Um, also, I don't like keep calling this the uh, to keep calling this the habitation unit, and I'm not even sure what we're going to call the base uh, yet. So, if anybody has any ideas what we're going to call the Minman base, let me know because I I don't know. But anyway, we are aiming for this great big flat pa plateau on the the highlands here. Um, I no real reason other than it was a nice easy target to aim for. Uh, it was on my uh, on my orbit. Uh, and yeah, that, that was that was pretty much my only reason why there. Uh, I kind of overdid the, the slowdown to begin with, but you know, there's no, no big issue there. You can see that we have got lots and lots of fuel left in this little engine here. I say this little, in this quite large engine here. More than enough to bring us down safely to the surface of Minmus. Uh, and in fact, so much that I'm like, right, well, I was going to dump this uh, up quite high, let it explode on the floor, and then use my monoprop that I put onto this unit to um, position and bring myself down safely. But I decided against that. Um, that was the original plan. What we're going to do now is come down very gently onto this engine, detach it close to the floor, use my monoprop to get away and make a safe touchdown. That's the plan. It should hopefully work. The only problem is this engine is quite overpowered for what I'm trying to do and I keep, as you can see, pushing myself up far too high. I don't know why I didn't think to use the thrust limiter. Um, that would have been ideal instead of just, you, you can see my throttle just kind of feathering down the bottom there. Uh, and now we're over onto RCS power. So glad that that fuel tank and engine didn't explode there and we're down. Woo! Uh, ex uh, extend all the solar panels because obviously we're not getting any power from the engines anymore. Uh, spin round so that our um, docking port is facing away from our rubbish in the background there. And there we go. Minmus Base 1 has uh, technically started. Um, the base isn't isn't finished yet. Obviously uh, we're missing the, uh, the communicatron that we put uh, up top. Oh, oh, I have named it. Wow, look at that. Mintopia. All right, well then, I am sorry for asking you all for your opinion earlier. We're going to call this Mintopia, obviously. So there we go. That's the planted flag done. Um, we've done a temperature scan. That's that's all the orbital science stuff. We are very nearly done. We just need to launch the second module to this unit and um, fly it out here. So what's on this second module? Well, first thing you'll notice is the science lab, because if we're going to have a base on Mimus, we might as well make it a science lab, because well, Mimus is good for getting all the science, right? Uh, we also have the communicatron that we ripped off the last one, monoprop to move it around, docking port to, to dock the two things together, probe core to keep its brains going, and a lot less fuel, because I believe the engineer redux here about how much delta V this ship had in it. It told me it had nearly six kilometers of delta V, which is more than enough to get to Minmus, or at least according to the cheat sheet on the wiki, it should be more than enough. You should only need five and a half, something like that. Uh, but as we are about to find out, it lied to me. I, I trusted it. I took it within my confidence. I, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna work all this out on paper. I'm just, I'm just gonna believe the mod that I've put on here for this very purpose. And it betrayed me. It took my trust and it threw away. It's very hard to trust a computer with your beloved, beloved mathematics. But I, 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 I thought I would put myself out there. I thought I would see if, if we could do it, but no. This is the orbit I am left with. You will see that it is no, not even a quarter of the way there. So what are we gonna do? Well, obviously it's time for Camtop to stand up, step up, because he is our most experienced Kerbal out there. Camtop, you'll remember we found floating in the voids of space, or at least the voids of low curb in orbit, 
thus making him, aside from Jeb, our actual most space experienced Kerbal out there. As Bob has literally just been sent to Minmus, I think this is possibly Bob's first mission. Um, but yeah, Cam Top, I think, is going to be our troubleshooting guy from now on. Um, as, as again, he is the most experienced. He can get th he can get things done when other Kerbals just kind of stand around looking at the, their feet, go, I don't know how to do this. Cam Top's like, yes, I can do orbits around around Kerbin. I was there without even a spaceship. How did I get there? <laughs> we don't talk about anyway i should probably say a few words about the uh, the mission itself uh the more astute of you would have noticed that we are using the betsy launcher this is just my standard light launcher uh it's got a, a core with some it's not asparagus but like um fuel tanks on the outside that feed in um it's a little bit efficient but not the most efficient uh and mainly we are just moving you see at the top we've got that that solid um not solid that long fuel cell we are taking that to the the science um module i start i need to know i need to name the modules we've got the habitation and the science module but th those are horrible names absolutely disgusting names right so i swap over to the science module just so we can get a bit more time acceleration on the go because i tried to do it um as refuel which is the name of the spacecraft i seem to have a trouble with naming stuff recently but yeah there we go um spend uh, literally the fastest amount of time sorting out my maneuver node that i have done like this entire mission i'm just like in boom got got our uh, encounter that's all that we need brilliant uh, and then we just have to wait a singular orbit well at least after this particular burn all we're gonna have to do is wait a, sing a, a single orbit um until those um uh what the word the encounter nodes are as close as possible i then use a little bit of rcs just pushing forwards and backwards to get myself as close as i can Four kilometers is not a terrible encounter. I will definitely uh, go with that. What is going to be terrible, though, is the upcoming rendezvous. Uh, it's been a little time since I've been doing since I've done my last um, in orbit rendezvous, and oh my, it shows in this particular uh, sequence that is about to happen now. Um, for starters, I'm looking around myself here, and I just I cannot find uh, my target. I can't can't find the space. Um, the, the, the science module uh, turns out that's because it's above me uh, I don't know why I didn't think to look up I'm obviously far too far ground based for this game I, I just can't figure out how to, to work things in space there is an up and a down well I don't know is there an up and down in space I don't know we, we could spend all episode talking about the relative directions in space I should imagine but what we're actually going to talk about is the way that for some reason I did not break fast enough for this um What's the word I'm looking for here? You see, whoa, rendezvous. That's the word I was looking for. Did you see how quick the, that science thing went past the and by there? I, I'm just, I was totally annoyed at myself at this point. I was like, look, you, you've done this many, many times before, Twitchy. You can do it in your sleep, or at least you used to be able to do it in your sleep. Just because you've had like two weeks off doesn't mean that you can't do it all of a sudden. Though it might actually mean that. So, we're within 150 metres, and I'm kind of thinking how close do we need to be to connect these fuel lines together, because I did, um, obviously the Kerbal Attachment System comes with the, the, the fuel line system, which is, like, the sole, well, not the, if it only came with this, I would install it just for that. The fact that the Kerbal Attachment System comes with cranes and, and struts and everything else is just mind-blowingly good. But I should get back on track before I get, like, uh, alarm clock level gushy about the attachment system uh and so i'm coming in and i'm wondering how close we need to be to actually um connect the fuel line across because the one thing i don't want to do is be right next door to it so that when cam top gets out to fly around they end up like bumping off each other and then all sorts of things could go horribly wrong so i'm about 30 meters away and it turns out that's about half the distance we need to be so if you anybody's actually ever wondering you need to be within sort of 15, 20 meters, probably even closer than that, if at all possible, to uh, to bring these vessels, uh, to connect the vessels together with the fuel lines. Uh, I'm glad I know that now. Knowledge is power after all. Um, and for some reason, these, this last little bit, the, 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 the spin yourself round and, and get as close to the target as you can option, it goes quite well not badly but I, i'm doing a lot of flailing around and pushing myself in in, in tiny little put uh, little directions which is, is good this is the 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 manner you're supposed to be doing it in um unfortunately it makes me feel uh that, that i wasn't really doing it well um 
Well, another thing that really didn't do well is that when I had control of the ship, for some reason I thought pressing shift and uh, opening the fuel tank is the way to uh, transfer fuel between one uh, between two vehicles. It's not. It's all all that shift will do is start your vehicles spinning around madly like this. It was terrible. Anyway, there we go. Refuel mission complete. Despite all the heartache and the, the troubles we had, it is now complete. So all we've got to do is point around towards our orbital velocity. Wait until we... Uh, point down towards our retrograde is the what I meant to say. Orbital velocity, I don't know, whilst it is tied in, was not what I was going for. Uh, wait until we are up at our Apple apps, because obviously that is the easiest bit to make sure that our Perry apps gets down underneath the atmosphere. Uh, use, use the remaining RCS to make sure... Well, that we we can get down because let's be honest, we've got no fuel left for for landing. Uh, I'm not sure what I would have done if I'd actually not put enough RCS onto this vessel. Um, I laughed a lot, I suppose. Uh, I was laughing a lot during this. It was, it was comically bad, I suppose is the phrase we're gonna gonna go for. Anyway, so last last bit of this episode before we uh, have to wrap up and we, we will do the transfer and getting the, the, the other vessel down to Mimma's next episode. We're going to watch Camtop come down really close to the KSC the Kerbal Space Centre like within 30 kilometres. I am like mucho impresto with myself, with Camtop obviously, Camtop being the one. And of course before we finish Boom! And with that, I would say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time when we're going to get all the stuff into orbit and stuff. Bye!